हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज भास्कर नापते फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब सो एज अ पार्ट ऑफ टूडेज वीडियो वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज मीन बाय इग्नाइट टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट इन केस इफ यू आर कंडक्टिंग रेसिड्यू ऑन इग्निशन टेस्टिंग और व्हाट इज मीन बाय ड्राइड टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट इन केस इफ यू आर कंडक्टिंग लॉस ऑन ड्राइंग सी सम ऑफ द टेस्ट प्रोसीजर और द मोनोग्राफ prescribes this particular sentence that you need to ignite the sample until the constant weight is achieved or you need to keep on drying the sample unless and until the constant weight is achieved so this is very important terms and most of the times people have a confusion which weight has to be considered what is mean by whether the constant weight is achieved or not so i will try to explain this concept with the help of uh, the usp pharmacopeia us pharmacopeia general notices so the first one is what the ignite to constant weight so what is mean by ignite to constant weight in case if you are conducting residue on ignition testing and here is the reference the reference is what the usp general notices 6.40.10 so according to this general notices ignite to constant weight means that ignition shall be continued at 800 plus or minus 25 degree celsius unless otherwise indicated until two consecutive weighings do not differ by more than 0.50 mg per gram of this substance taken so as you are going to ignite the sample at 800 degree celsius let us say for 1 hour and after 1 hour ignition you are going to understand how much is the residue left over so this is your first ignition then you are again going to ignite the same sample available into the crucible and then again weigh it for second time so the difference between this two consecutive weight has to be measured if the difference between these two consecutive weight is less than 0.50 mg for 1 g of the initial sample taken then you can say okay now the constant weight has been achieved but in case if the difference between these two consecutive weight is greater than 0.50 mg then you cannot say the constant weight is achieved in that situation you need to again start ignition for third time and then take the weight and then understand the difference between the consecutive weights if it found to be less than 0.50 mg then you can stop the ignition further so this is called as the uh, ignite to constant weight the second weighing or the subsequent weighing has to be taken after an additional ignition period appropriate to the nature and quantity of the residue so if the further or if the difference between two consecutive weighing is greater than 0.50 mg then only you have to go for the further uh, ignition otherwise it is not necessary let us now talk about dry to constant weight and here is the reference given in the usp general notices which is 6.40.20 dried to constant weight means that drying shall be continued until two consecutive weighings do not differ by more than 0.50 mg per gram of the substance taken it is almost one and the same as like ignite to constant weight and the second weighing has to be taken after an additional drying period appropriate to the nature and quantity of the residue so this is the definition of ignite to constant weight and ignite and dry it to constant weight let us now understand this concept with the help of one example and i am going to explain this concept with the help of residue on ignition testing residue on ignition testing now these are the weighing details so weight of the empty crucible is 45.1110 g so you have taken the empty crucible which is uh, already heated at certain temperature dried well 
cool into a desiccator and then have taken the weight which is 45.1110 gram this is the weight of the empty crucible then you have added around 1 gram of the sample and the weight of the crucible plus sample found to be 46.1120 so what is the weight of the sample you have taken it is just the difference between these two weights and it is 1.0010 gram so once you have this weighing done you are going to treat the sample according to your test procedure going to ignite at 800 degree celsius temperature maybe add for one hour according to your test procedure so once this ignition period is over you are going to cool the desiccator you are going to cool the crucible inside the, cruci the desiccator inside the desiccator why because your crucible must not absorb the moisture that is the only purpose of cooling the crucible inside the desiccator so once you cool the crucible into a desiccator you have to weigh the crucible that is your first weighing after the ignition that is your first weighing after the ignition and let us say that the weight of the first weighing is 45.1130 gram 11 45.1130 gram so what is important point now in case if your test procedure says that ignite until the constant weight you cannot stop the testing over here but you need to further understand you need to further understand whether the constant weight was really achieved at the first wing and how to understand that see unless and until you ignite it for a second time and then take the weight and then measure the difference how one come and how one can understand whether the constant weight was achieved or not and hence you have to go for the second ignition step so go for the ignition for second time with the same treatment ignite for one hour according to your test procedure then cool it in a desiccator and then again weigh and let us assume that the second weighing is 45.1123 gram so now you need to calculate the difference between these two weighings and how much is the difference by the way the difference is 0 0.007 gram or 0.7 milligram now what is the conclusion the conclusion is for about one gram of the sample look at here the sample is around one gram the difference in consecutive weight is how much 0.7 milligram so does the constant weight achieved what is the definition of the constant weight the difference between two consecutive weight must be less than 0.5 milligram but we found it is 0.7 milligram so you need to continue the ignition as the constant weight has not been achieved so you are again going to ignite the crucible for at 800 degrees celsius for one hour according to your test procedure and then you will cool it in a desiccator and then take the third weighing and let us assume that the third weighing is 45.1121 gram now calculate the difference between consecutive weights or consecutive weighing means the difference between second weighing and the third weighing and you will find that it is now 0 0.0002 gram or 0.2 milligram so what is the conclusion now the conclusion is for about one gram of the sample the difference in consecutive weight is 0.2 mg 0.2 milligram so have you achieved the constant weight by this time now because the difference in two consecutive weighings is less than 0.5 milligram per gram and hence you can say that the constant weight has been achieved and as the constant weight has been achieved further ignition is not required so why you want to ignite the sample further as the constant weight has been achieved so you have to go for the calculation now and this is the calculation formula the percent residue on ignition is equal to what the weight of residue divided by weight of the sample into 100 the very important point here is now which weight of residue has to be considered is it the weight of residue achieved at the first weighing or second weighing or third weighing so the weight of residue when constant weighing was achieved so what is the step what is the ignition step at which the constant weight was achieved 
Look at here at the first weighing, you said that I need to check and confirm and you found that the difference was 0 0.007 gram or 0.7 milligram. So the first weight has to be ignored because at that time the constant weight was not achieved. So you go on for the second time and then you go on for the third time. You go on for third time and then you found that the difference of second weighing and third weighing is 0.2 milligram. So most of the times people assume that the last weight has to be considered means the weight of the residue at the third has to be considered but that is not the truth. You have to consider the residue weight during the second weighing. See the third weighing is only made, the third ignition is only made to understand whether the constant weight was achieved at the second step during the second weighing. And if you found that at the during second weighing the constant weight was already been achieved then why you have to consider the residue at second ignition? Uh, sorry why you have to consider the ignition at third? Why you have to consider the weight at third ignition? Certainly not and hence you must consider the residue weight obtained during the second weighing. I will explain one more time why the second weighing residue has to be considered. The third ignition is only been, only been performed to understand whether the constant weight was achieved during the second ignition. Now when you conducted the third ignition, you found that the constant weight was already achieved at the second ignition. And hence, whatever residue available, Whatever residue weight you observed during the second ignition or during second weighing has to be considered for the calculation. I hope you are clear now. So determine the weight of residue at the second weighing and here is the calculation formula. So weight of crucible along with the residue at second weighing minus weight of the empty crucible. So how much is the weight of uh, crucible along with residue at second weighing it is 45.1123 gram and this is the weight of empty crucible 45.1110 gram and you will find that 0 0.0013 gram is the residue weight and put into the calculation formula and you will find that the residue on ignition is 0.13% so this is the way you can also calculate the uh, constant weighing until drying. You can also calculate the loss on drying in the same way. Thank you so much.